The classic 1964 spaghetti western, A Fistful of Dollars, directed by Sergio Leone and starring Clint Eastwood, saw German-born actress Marianne Koch play the role of Marisol. Leone unofficially based the movie on Akira Kurosawa's 1961 film Yojimbo. In fact, the two films bear so much resemblance, it resulted in a successful lawsuit by the Japanese film production company Toho. According to the film's backstory, Marisol was at one point the wife of the character Julio and was the mother of their son Jesus, but she ended up getting held hostage by the infamous gangster Ramon Rojo. Not much is known to the audience about Marisol's early life other than the fact that she was more than likely born in Mexico and ended up meeting and marrying Julio at some point. Sometime after giving birth to Jesus, Marisol attracted the unwanted attention of the villainous Ramon who accused Julio of cheating in a card game. He uses this accusation to justify kidnapping Marisol. Marianne Koch was born in Munich, Germany on August 18, 1931. While she's best known for her iconic role as Marisol, Koch originally set out to be a doctor. She interrupted her medical studies to enter into acting in 1950. 21 years later, she quit acting to resume her studies to become a doctor. She succeeded in that goal in 1974 and maintained a medical career in her home country as a specialist until 1997. At the same time, Koch hosted a very successful talk show called Three Nach Nine or Three After Nine, which earned the German equivalent of an Emmy. Koch went on to host medical advice programs on German radio. Well into her 90s, Koch has since retired from both her medical and acting careers. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the character Coke played in A Fistful of Dollars and how despite the fact that she didn't speak a word, everyone noticed her. We'll also give you an overview of the film in question. A Fistful of Dollars, a complicated origin story. Initially, A Fistful of Dollars was going to be called Il Magnifico Straniero, or The Magnificent Stranger. Leone intended for it to reinvent the Western genre in Italy. From his perspective, American Westerns of the 50s had become stagnant, were overly preachy, and were far from being believable. Even though Hollywood had already begun to dial down its support for such films, Leone knew there was still a considerable European market for Westerns. The production and development cycle of A Fistful of Dollars is a bit difficult to decipher given the contradictory anecdotes and descriptions provided by those close to the project. After Kurosawa's Yojimbo was released in Italy in 1963, Sergio Corbucci claimed that he told Leone to make the film, after viewing Kurosawa's work with friends and suggesting it to director Enzo Barboni. Alternatively, Tonino Valeri claimed that Barboni and Stelvio Massi met with Leone outside of a movie theater in Rome where they had watched Yojimbo. At that point, it was suggested it would make a decent western. Clint Eastwood wasn't the first actor to be approached about playing the lead character. Originally, Leone had intended Henry Fonda to play the nameless protagonist. But after the production company discovered they couldn't afford to cast a major Hollywood star, they offered Charles Bronson the role. He, like Fonda, declined, arguing the script was subpar. Eastwood later said he too had already come up with a similar idea of adapting Yojimbo into a western after a friend of his who was obsessed with samurai films took him to watch a screening of Kurosawa's film at a Western Avenue theater that screened Japanese films. When he was later handed a script of A Fistful of Dollars and offered the lead role, about 10 pages into it he realized what it was, an obvious ripoff of Yojimbo. Eastwood decided to go ahead and accept Leone's casting offer. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. An Unforgettable Plot After arriving at the little town of San Miguel, Mexico, which sits on the Mexico-US border, the man without a name is told by the town's innkeeper, Silvanito, about a feud between two smuggler families vying for control of the town. The battle is waged between the Rojo brothers, Don Miguel, Esteban, and Ramon, and the town sheriff, John Baxter, his wife Consuelo, and their son Antonio. To try to make a little money while in town, the stranger pits these rival families against each other. He shows off his speed and accuracy with his gun to both sides by gunning down the four men who insulted him when he entered town. After witnessing the brothers Rojo massacre a deployment of Mexican soldiers who came to town bearing a chest of gold in exchange for a shipment of rifles, the stranger seizes the opportunity by taking two of the bodies to a cemetery and then selling information to each of the warring factions saying two of the Mexican soldiers survived the attack. Both families then race to the cemetery. 
The Baxters intended to get the survivors to testify against the Rojos, while the Rojos intended to silence them. Once there, the two sides engage in a firefight, with Ramon appearing to slaughter the alleged survivors and Esteban capturing Antonio. At this point, the stranger approached Marisol. He then learns from Silvanito that Ramon actually framed Julio as a cheater during the card game we mentioned earlier. Later that evening, while the Rojos were celebrating, the stranger rides out and frees Marisol, shooting all the guards and ransacking the house in which she was held to create the appearance of it being attacked by the Baxters. He gives Marisol a bit of money and urges her and her family to leave town. Once the Rojos discover it was the stranger who freed Marisol, they capture and torture him, but ultimately he escapes. Believing he's under the protection of the Baxters, the Rojos set fire to the Baxter family home, massacring them as they flee. While Ramon pretends he'll spare their lives, he ends up killing John and Antonio. Once Consuelo returns home and discovers her family has been killed, she curses the Rojos for slaying unarmed men. Sadly, that's when she gets shot dead by Esteban. The stranger then employs the help of the town's coffin maker, Piripero, to escape town by riding out in a coffin. He makes his way to a nearby mine, but that's when he's informed by Piripero that Silvanito has been kidnapped and is being tortured by the dastardly Rojos for information about his whereabouts. The stranger returns to town to confront the Rojos. Wearing a steel plate on his chest under his poncho, the stranger taunts Ramon to aim for the heart. Ramon proceeds to shoot him repeatedly until he runs out of ammo. The stranger then shoots Ramon's gun out of his hand and kills Don Miguel, Rubio, and the other Rojos standing nearby. He uses his last remaining bullet to free Silvanito, who's hanging from a rope. Then he challenges Ramon to try to reload his rifle faster than he can. Ramon loses that challenge when the stranger shoots and kills him. Esteban Rojo, lurking in a nearby building, tries to take aim at the stranger's back, but ends up getting shot dead by Silvanito. Marianne Koch's role in A Fistful of Dollars, while relatively minor, was, in retrospect, quite noteworthy. Throughout the film, she remained silent, but even so, she's arguably one of the most memorable characters of the movie. Throughout her film career, Koch appeared in more than 65 films, many of which were leading roles in German films. She was later a regular panelist on the highly popular German game show Was bin ich, an adaptation of the American game show What's My Line. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite scene from A Fistful of Dollars? And what did you think about Marianne Koch's performance? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.